Welcome to Bruce Tracy Photography. Tonight we're going back after the Pinwheel Galaxy. Now I've attempted to get this Galaxy three times before and I have failed three times before. I first went after it with my Acromat, which is a Star Travel 102. I put on a Bader semi apple filter and what that does is it cuts down on the uh, color aberration. But for some reason I was cutting out so much light that I just didn't get enough detail to get a good photograph. I then went out there with my Evil Star 72 ED, which is an apple chromatic telescope. But again, I put a light pollution filter on there. Uh, the Optolong UHC filter. And again, what I think happened is I just didn't get enough light to get any kind of good detail. I'm going to try it again tonight. I think I've figured out my problem. I am not going to use any kind of a light pollution filter tonight. And I'm going to see if I can just absorb enough detail. I'm going to try two nights. My goal is to get about three and a half hours out there on this thing. And we're going to see if I can get enough detail without the filter to make this work. Now keep in mind, I'm using a 72 millimeter telescope, which is not nearly long enough to get these distant galaxies. These are small, not very bright galaxies. It's really hard to get with a telescope my size, but we're going to give it a shot. Join me. We're heading to the backyard right now to get set up. This time, fourth time, hopefully it's the charm. Join me in the backyard. It took me a long time to finally get locked in, but we are locked in. Those numbers look good. The graph is looking great. It took me a couple hours to get the polar alignment down and get the graph running right, so... I'm not going to get a lot of time in tonight, but at least I have it locked in for tomorrow. We'll get about an hour and a half tonight and another two hours tomorrow. That should be good. I'm inside watching YouTube, letting the camera do all the work outside. Let's go see how it looks. From here, that graph looks great. Beautiful night. In fact, let me see if I can... Focus to infinity here. There we go. Now you can see the Big Dipper right there. That's uh, Ursa Major. Pinwheel is right there in the handle. If you look just above the tree, you'll see the Big Dipper. And you got the Pinwheel Galaxy. Let's see if I can point to it with my finger. Right over in this area, right over here. So that thing is perfect because it's right above us and it's just going to continue this way throughout the night. So I'm going to get two and a half to three hours on that tonight, which is perfect. Looking good. I probably won't be able to see my sub there on the camera. I'm taking two minute subs. So I'm going to try to get three and a half hours of two minute subs. No noise pollution filter on my telescope tonight. That was the problem I was having earlier. All of my failures were coming because I kept using noise pollution filters and I wasn't getting enough data. So now I think I got that problem fixed. I've got my Apple Chromatic Telescope out here tonight. That's the Evil Star 72 ED. I've got the Canon 60D on the back tonight. I'm filming this with my Canon EOS R, but I'm using the Canon 60D and the reason is because that's a crop sensored camera. So I'm getting a 1.6 crop factor, meaning I get a little bit of extra reach on these photographs. That telescope's a 420 meter millimeter telescope. So that 1.6 crop factor just gives me a little extra reach. Then there's the SV Bonnie. That's my guide scope right there, which is giving me a pretty nice, it does a great job. It's 30 millimeter guide scope. Does a great job of locking in on a star. It's giving me some great guiding right here tonight. So we're set. If you look to the south there, you see all that light pollution. Fortunately, I don't have to deal with that. That's Santa Clarita over there. So that's Valencia, Saugus, Canyon Country, Stevenson Ranch. They all make up the Santa Clarita Valley. There's a lot of light pollution out that way. But over here in Castaic, it is just nice and dark. So you get a nice view of the Big Dipper right up there. All right, we're gonna keep shooting tonight. Again, three and a half hours is what I'm looking at for total. Two minute subs. Uh, ISO is 800. What else do we need to know? I think that's about it. So everything else is ready to go. I'm gonna go inside and watch some YouTube videos and let this stuff do its work out here. Well, I did it. Turns out the fourth time's the charm. I just finished processing the photo. I like the way it turned out. 
Now you've got to keep in mind when you look at this photo that I'm about to show you, I'm shooting with a 72 millimeter telescope. So I'm shooting a galaxy that's over 20 million light years away with a 72 millimeter telescope. So obviously I had to do a lot of cropping. I've got this thing framed perfectly. There's two galaxies I really like that are also part of this frame. Uh, NGC 5474, that's the one that's in the upper, let me think here, I think it's the left hand corner, has that little smudge next to it. The other galaxy I like in this photograph is NGC 5422, and that's that little elongated galaxy in the bottom corner. So the way I have it framed up, you see both of those galaxies pretty good, but of course the pinwheel galaxy is right there in the middle. I'm pretty pleased with this photograph, it took me a lot of effort to get it, so the harder you work for something, the more you seem to appreciate it. I appreciate this photograph. I hope you do too. Let me end the video by showing you my version of the Pinwheel Galaxy.